Welcome back to the second segment of this special episode of Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm here with Eric Coffin, who is the co-founder of the Metals Investor Forum uh, Conference, along with Scott Gibson. Scott is not with me now, but uh, he is the co-founder. Uh, I know him well and think very highly of his of his work there in Vancouver. Uh, Eric, can you talk to us about two zinc exploration companies you were inviting to the January 2018 Metals Investor Forum, namely Vendetta Mining Corp. and then Fireweed Zinc. Perhaps start out with Vendetta. Yeah, Vendetta's been drilling for three or four months now. Uh, I started following them a little over a year ago at seven cents. I think they're about 22, 23 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last resource update they put out in the fall was about 10 million tons. The uh, it's it's a sort of a it's a lead zinc I guess properly would be the fairer way to describe it. It's got a little more lead than zinc. What I like about it is, and this was definitely reinforced with the resource that update. A lot of the tonnage there is open pit. Uh, the property is right in the middle of the world's largest lead zinc production area in Australia. It's surrounded by large producers. It's surrounded. It's fairly close to both lead and zinc smelters. The infrastructure situation is great. Uh, they they're probably done drilling now, but there's still I would say at least 30 or 40 holes to to report. They they had two rigs going hard at it for three or four months. As soon as all those holes are back from the lab, they'll do another resource estimate. Uh, I think chances are pretty good they get it up to the 15 million ton level after the next one. They've always kind of considered that the magic number when it comes to being in play, uh, they thought if they could have 15 million tons, that would allow for a mine plan that extracted, say, a million tons a year for 10 years, and that, mm-hmm. they think that's kind of a magic number with potential acquirers. But they've also told me that the numbers are looking strong enough. Uh, they'll go immediately to doing a PEA. I expect the numbers in that PEA to be very strong. And I, I think uh, given the relatively low CapEx because of the infrastructure advantages, if they if they don't have someone knocking on the door pretty much immediately, I I actually think you'll see these guys just start pushing ahead to uh, put it in production. Because the the truth is, if you're if you're in the position they're in and you're you're trying to attract a buyer, the best way to do that is to act like you don't really want one mm-hmm. and yeah. just move to production. So that's I I think that's the plan B. I think plan A would just be to have someone take them over. And I do I've said all along I. I think 2018 is the year that's going to happen. I don't. I don't think they'll be around the end of next year. All right. If it's selling at 23 cents now, has it got some upside from here? You you bought it at seven cents. You say you 23 cents. Yeah, well, I bought good it. Move. Yeah, and I, I bought a bunch of the 20 cent placement they did in, in the fall too, so I didn't uh-huh. really buy it at seven. But yeah, I would think you know with you know I don't I don't want to arm with too much on back of the envelope numbers, but I mean I can tell you my back of the envelope my back of the envelope number is. Uh, you know, essentially, it's almost an order of magnitude higher than the market cap uh, on the PEA. So, mm-hmm. all you know, right. I think a buyer could be paying, you know, two or three or even four times yeah. what it's trading now, and still, you know, leave plenty on the table for themselves. All right, that's a zinc company in Australia. Another one you're inviting to the conference is uh, Fireweed Zinc. <laughs> it's a, a North American story. Tell us about that one. Yeah, Fireweed's a very good management group. Strong group of guys. It, it's uh, a project called uh, McMillan Pass in the Yukon Territory. McMillan Pass has two uh, two separate deposits, or you know, a couple of kilometers apart, called Tom and Jason. Uh, Hud Bay, about 10 years ago, did a resource estimate on them, and it's about 30 million tons of resources at, at very good grades. Hud Bay agreed to to sell that property to the Fireweed guys, and and to, to give some context, that agreement was essentially, a, you know, it was done as a handshake deal mm-hmm. at the bottom of the zinc market before Glencore cut back production before the price took off. And, you know, credit to Hut Bay, they, you know, they were stand-up guys and said, no, that, you know, a deal is a deal. That's what we agreed to. Mm-hmm. So they didn't, they didn't try to reprice it. So they got a really good deal on this project. Uh, they felt the first thing they needed to do was bring that resource up to date because it's not 43101 standards. They did a bunch of drilling this year to do that. Uh, some of that was, a lot of that was infill. Some of it was step out. Uh, and they, they have a, an engineering group now doing an updated resource estimate. I think that's coming really soon. Like I would say first week of January. 
Uh, they put up their last couple of holes two weeks ago, and they were very nice drill holes. But those holes have been held up because of some lab issues. But they'd already handed off all of the earlier holes and some holes that had bay drill about three years ago uh, off to the engineer. So they were well underway with a resource estimate. You know, when they when they started this drilling this year, my expectation was that we'd see a resource that would be you know, pretty much the same, 30 million tons, because they weren't they weren't trying to do a lot of step out. They were really trying to uh, they were trying to confirm the grade was there. They needed to get estimates for metal. They needed to get samples for metallurgy. They needed samples for specific gravity. But as it turned out, some of their deeper holes, sort of at the bottom of these zones, hit really nice grade intercepts, and in a lot of cases, much wider intercepts than even they expected. Mm -hmm. So based on that, based on the fact they will be using new specific gravity, HUD Bay really didn't put any effort into doing that in the first one. Uh, they haven't told me what their specific gravity number is. And, and when you're working out a resource estimate, you work out the volume, and then you multiply it by specific gravity to get sure. the So specific gravity goes right into the calculation. But it, it sounds to me like it's probably in the order of 15 or 20 percent higher. Mm -hmm. And assuming, assuming, other, assuming the drilling hasn't dropped the volume, uh, that specific gravity number goes right to the bottom line. So I'm, I'm now thinking, you know, high 30 millions. High in the high 30s range for the million tons, and I don't think the grade's going to drop to get there because a lot of their holes were slightly better grade than historical mm. holes around. So I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the way that's working out. I think that message has gotten across to traders because uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but Fire Reads had a pretty good move here in the last week or two, and the the sellers have disappeared. Like there's just there's nobody on the offer side right now. It's, yeah. it's trading right now at about, a, well, the last trade was about 15. That, that's up from about 80 cents a week ago. But more to the point, there's just nothing on offer. So this is a stock, if you like it, you're going to have to bid. It's, it's, <laughs> a small market order will take it up 50 cents. There's just there's nothing there. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at fireweed zinc now on the screen, Eric. I see it, if unless uh, fireweed zinc, yeah. A uh, dollar two? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And okay. the, the last trade was actually at a dollar. The last trade was actually a dollar fifteen, but, uh -huh. but uh, right now I, I've got a I've got a trading screen open, and right now there is thirty thousand shares offered at any price. That's wonderful. Well, uh, what what did you uh, what did you tell your at what price was it when you advised your your subscribers to buy it? They only listed um, basically at the start of the summer in May. Uh, it was a 50 cent listing. I, I put something out on it before the IPO. I'm, I'm hoping some of my subscribers actually got, I think some of them did, mm -hmm. managed to actually get a bit of the IPO. It, it started trading at about 75 cents, went to a buck almost immediately, and then mm -hmm. tailed off. And I, you know, I told people, like, like, if you didn't get the IPO, try to be patient. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to say, you know, 65 to 80 cent ring, something like that. Please don't go away because coming up on the next segment of this special episode of Turning Hard Times into Good Times, Eric will talk about another company he is inviting to the January 2018 Metals Investor Forum. Um, that company is uh, San Marco Exploration, a company that I also own. He'll also, uh, hopefully if we have enough time, talk to us about California Gold Mining. That's a company he invited to the November Metals Investor Forum, and I learned to know about it and thought so highly of it that I have added it to my own newsletter. So don't go away. We'll be right back in the next segment with Eric Coffin.